hey guys uh, welcome back uh, the previous video i was talking about uh, the basics of game farming uh, in this video uh, i would like to visit on some more uh, topics related to beam farming um, so when when we say we we are going to do beam farming what are things can be done okay let us uh, see to that so first i will uh, talk about the topic which we had uh, discussed in the previous video as well uh, that is uh, um, related to changing the shape of the beam okay so let's say you know if i take just one antenna uh, and this antenna has got uh, uh, its own default uh, beam right so that beam could be uh, something like this and uh, this beam width is very wide right and um, and uh, and if this is the uh, beam that we gonna get from single antenna then it has got limited applications and if you are able to meet all the applications that we wanted with this kind of beam then we would be fine but we need to have uh, more applications we need to cover more scenarios that is when uh, we are uh, mentioning uh, that we need to do some more uh, beam forming aspects right so for that reason one of the things which we discussed uh, uh, in the previous video is related to 5G. Right, 5G we were moving to uh, millimeter waves, and millimeter waves so we faced the problem. What was the problem? So if you take the same single antenna, let's say this is a, a center frequency f1. This was less than 6 gigahertz. So let's say another center frequency uh, uh, f2, and this is uh, let's say you know greater than 24 gigahertz. With such a high frequency. Uh, okay, uh, let me write that in a different color. Let's say the, the same thing I will use it here. Then the the beam would travel lesser distance. Okay, as you can see, this is traveling less distance because at high frequency the path loss is very high and it traveled very less distance and and because of which uh, you know uh, we are not able to uh, get a very good coverage. So for this, one of the things which we spoke is that uh, you deploy multiple antennas. Okay, so an array of antennas, let's say uh, an array. Now, uh, if you try to do the beam forming from this, uh, we would get, uh, you know, we would get a very narrow beam. Okay, we can we can call it as a pencil beam and we will have a lot of uh, side lobes right so this uh, if you compare to uh, if you compare to this one right or even if you compare to this one since the energy is uh, concentrated in the um, mainly in the main beam uh, you know it will travel for a longer distance and coverage is increased this is one of the uh, applications which is required in case of ig and that's where uh, we are performing this operation right so i hope you got uh, uh, the clarity with respect to first aspect that is uh, you know changing the shape of the beam making it pencil beam and ensuring that it travels for a longer distance and we also got to know how uh, that can be that can be done okay by by uh, by deploying more number of uh, antennas an array of antennas so then what else uh, we can do with the beam forming so let, let's say uh, the second one is uh, beam steering okay so why do we need this so in case of uh, uh, let's say um, fc1 okay so this was having wider beam right so there could be ue here ue here ue here ue here all the uvs are actually you know are covered with this uh, one single beam okay but the moment we are deploying in spite of single antenna we are deploying an array of antennas like this okay then we are going to get uh, a narrow beam right uh, let's say uh, i got a narrow beam something like this see it's traveled for a longer distance and and also this is covering only one uv here now how to ensure that we also uh, give uh, the coverage to other uvs other uvs should also receive the signal so in that case definitely you know uh, we need to uh, do the beam switching or beam steering so in, in the other moment we need to actually you know form the beam something like that okay sorry so uh, let's say something like this so in, in some other case we need to switch the beam um, in the, uh, something like this right so this is another thing which we will do in the beam steering but 
how to perform this beam steering so to steer the beam to a different angle okay so right now i am considering only uh, azimuth uh, or let's say this is azimuth uh, is equal to 0 degree uh, this could be you know azimuth uh, is equal to uh, 30 degree this could be you know azimuth uh, is equal to 50 degree so uh, with respect to angles with respect to azimuth angle or elevation angle we are trying to steer the beam to a different uh, uh, direction right this is a, a one thing but to steer to a different uh, uh, direction or different angle what do we need actually the the main concept i will come in the late uh, in the later videos but right now what i would say is uh, just before uh, transmitting over the antennas we need to have uh, uh, we need to have phase shifters okay across these antennas so these uh, we need to derive let's say to transmit the beam uh, uh, at uh, azimuth 30 degree we need to give a progressive phase shift on all these uh, uh, phase shifters uh, so that uh, the beam is directed towards uh, this azimuth 30, de 30 degree so this is the second thing which uh, uh, which can be done uh, when we say we are doing we are performing beam forming so what about third one third one is uh, um, so when we have a large number of antennas okay so uh, so let's say i will just take azimuth uh, zero degree or we can say bore, bore site uh, right now i have not even considered the elevation okay i have just considered only one dimension uh, and then uh, let's say the beam the beam is something like this okay it's it's actually uh, let's say it's a pencil beam but still we will have lots of uh, uh, you know what do you say side lobes okay so these side lobes are also uh, i mean if if you if you don't uh, perform some kind of operation then what you would see is that these side lobes are also very significant okay in some cases uh, i mean in some cases the side lobes ca can be oh, sorry so side lobes can be pretty much something like this as well okay so in which case uh, this is this is this might act as an interference right so um, so wh what do we need like we need to ensure that the side lobes levels are as much low as possible and and we need uh, mainly the energy should be concentrated on the main beam okay so that the main beam can travel for a longer distance and also there won't be any kind of interference from the side lobe levels so this can be achieved uh, with again uh, some kind of uh, you know attenuators which are present across each of these antennas so we can have a different kind of uh, attenuation values that that can be played across these uh, uh, attenuators so that uh, uh, you know we can bring a uh, bring a, bring a uh, we can bring a uh, rf pattern or rf beam uh, which are having very much less high log levels okay i hope you got the clarity i, I would say um, third point is uh, getting low side lobe levels okay ssl so even in case of phase shifter in the second case phase shifter here i was using phase shifter which we which are these are hardware components okay and these are performed in the uh, analog domain so in this this will be like analog beam forming okay but the similar kind of uh, progressive phase shift we can even um, perform to the uh, digital signal as well digital uh, or discrete signal is x of n we can perform you know e to the power of uh, um, j phi right this phi we can change the angle of this particular discrete uh, uh, discrete signal so if we if we do it in uh, digital domain if we perform this progressive phase shift in digital domain we can say this is uh, digital beam forming we can do either in analog domain or in other in the digital domain similarly here as well i i was using attenuators okay uh, so uh, th this is again the hardware component this is done in the analog domain um, this can also be done in the uh, uh, digital domain 
to your uh, signal x of n all right so i hope you got the clarity on these uh, three aspects now i am going to the fourth one fourth one is pretty much important uh, uh, because that is where we do uh, more beam forming uh, um, in our uh, 4g or 5g uh, so that is uh, forming the beam with the vectors so these vectors uh, uh, could be in certain direction so i will just take an example like uh, uh, this is a uh, two dimension okay this is let's say x axis and y axis i can say that form a beam on the vector 1 1 so 1 1 means x axis uh, let's say 1 and y axis also 1 so this is 1 1 so the beam is formed in this direction okay mainly the signal is traveling in this direction so this is also kind of uh, uh, the beam forming this we usually you know uh, perform uh, in the digital domain okay using these uh, vectors and that's where uh, um, you know we are calling it as uh, i mean in our um, signal processing chain we perform these kind of actions uh, at uh, the precoding block okay so with precoding as well we are performing a beam forming more more to this i will come in the upcoming videos but uh, please note that uh, at the precoding stage what were the um, precoding matrix that we apply uh, it is going to form a, a beam in a different directions in the uh, in the 2d plane or in, in the n dimension plane so this uh, since we are performing mainly in the digital domain uh, this is uh, uh, actually called as uh, the digital beam forming so even uh, we, we are actually performing uh, dfts ofdm right so this is also ensures that uh, a certain kind of beam is formed uh, um, in, the, in the space so this is also known as uh, as per 3gpp spec it is also known as transform precoding okay here also the digital beam forming is happening with with this block Okay, I hope uh, you got this uh, concept. Um, um, so, one more aspect what I want to tell you is what is the difference between this, uh, this uh, fourth point, and uh, what we spoke in the second point, beam steering. Here, mainly we are steering the beam by giving the angles. Okay, by giving the angle 30 degree, 50 degree, and things like that. Even we can give the angle in the elevation. But here, mainly we are giving in terms of vector. Actually, I gave a vector 1, 1. But if you plot it in the two dimension, 1, 1 uh, appears at this point, And then, you know, we form the beam along the direction. But if you really see, you know, this also has got some azim azimuth angle. Right? Let's say if you take, uh, you know, this is, uh, if you take uh, uh, this as a, uh, array of antennas are present uh, like this and if we take x-axis as the bore site okay then definitely we can say this is uh, uh, with azimuth is equal to 45 degree but rather than mentioning like this we are performing uh, the the beam forming with vectors okay so i hope you got all the four concepts there could be many much more uh, other uh, things uh, where uh, we can do with the beam forming like with respect to polarization and things like that but uh, right now uh, these four aspects are very much important and uh, these things uh, we will focus mainly uh, mainly in the upcoming videos and we will see uh, what are the things applied in case of a 4g and 5g thank you very much uh, in the upcoming video i will talk about uh, um, more with respect to this uh, fourth one okay then i will move on to the other uh, beam forming aspects Please do subscribe to the channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.